good to see you. If you're watching online, thank you. Let's worship together.
an altar. Sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make this place an altar. Make this place an altar. Sing, my soul. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we make this place an altar, an altar of surrender. Laying down everything we have. We worship you today in complete honesty and truth and in spirit. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we declare this. Sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make this place an altar. Make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make this place an altar. Make this That's beautiful, place church. An altar. Oh, sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make this place an altar. Make this place an altar. Oh, sing, my soul will sing. Make this place an altar. Make this place an altar. So thankful, Jesus, for everything you've done. We won't forget it. You're our Savior. You're our healer. We open up our hearts to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
You're the God who fights for me. situation today where everywhere you look there's a bad report or bad news or sure what you think is going to be your downfall or your destruction just know that God is surrounding you he's gone before you doesn't matter if there's a sea in front of you and a hostile army behind you God has got you come on say God has got me nothing else happens today, I want to remind you, God has got you. If you have found yourself in that place or you have any kind of need today, the presence of God is here. Why don't you just lift your hands? You're not ashamed to do so. I need a miracle. I need God to move in my behalf. I need God to change my circumstance. I need God to change me in my circumstance. Come on, the healer is in this house. If you have a physical need, to see that in your mind and see yourself healed. No matter what you're going through, families that need to be restored, if you need direction professionally, if you have this thing in front of you that's gonna require great resources, God is with you, he owns everything. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I sense your healing virtue in this place. I sense miracles in this place. And we believe. We open up our hearts and we believe. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.
right here. Set our hearts. Come on, Grace, can we take this moment right here and acknowledge that we are right in the middle of a move of God. You are in the middle of a miracle moment, in the middle of your miracle. If you need a healing from God, a touch from God, come on, with your hands lifted up. God, we acknowledge that you are moving. We acknowledge that you are in the room. We acknowledge that even though we don't see it, you are moving on our behalf. Hey, Grace, welcome home. It's a good day to be at church. Before you settle into your seats, why don't you fist bump somebody next to you, give them an air high five, and let them know they look good this morning. <laughs> hey, my name is Jesse, and before we go into today's matches from our pastor, we first want to say, hey, here at Grace, we are one big family. <laughs> We are one church, we meet in many locations until everyone hears the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're also online. Hey, help me welcome everyone online who has tuned in today. You are family. We are so grateful that you chose to hang out with us today. And if you are watching for the very first time, maybe you, a friend sent you a link and you clicked on it. We want you to know that here at Grace, you're family. And we would love to bring you into our online community. So in the chat, you're going to see a moment pop up. Why don't you click on that button? We'll reach out to you and get to know you a little bit, bring into our online community. And hey, if this is your first time here in the house, welcome to Grace. Can we welcome all of our first-time guests? Come on, we love you. We hope that you felt welcomed and loved as you, in the parking lot, and you saw a, a, a friendly face or those who took care of your babies. We hope that that you feel loved and welcomed and accepted, you belong here, would you do this in your honor? On the screen to my, to my right and to my left, you're gonna see a QR code that's gonna pop up. You can actually scan this QR code from where you are at, just zoom in a bit. It'll take you right to our online connect card. Go ahead and fill that out. We know that choosing a, a home church, it's a little nerve wracking. So we wanna take away all of the awkwardness and. You can relax, this is our gift to you. If you are ready to take that next step, go ahead and 
zoom on that QR code and it'll take you right to our Connect card and we'll love to meet you in our guest suite in the lobby to the right is a space just for you to meet some incredible people hear the history of about grace and how you are a part a big part of what we do and maybe you already noticed that today is growth track Sunday you saw the signs out there orange everywhere who has been the growth track before we offer our in-person option the second Sunday after first service every time but you didn't miss out because you can go online anytime and complete Growth Track. Growth Track is really um, a place for everyone who wants to call Grace home, or maybe you've been coming around for a while, kicking the tires, or wondering if this is the place for you. At Growth Track, you will hear the vision, the values, you will hear from Pastor Scott on the direction of our church. But really, what you'll find out that Growth Track is not mostly about us, it's about you and how God uniquely designed you. To, to make an impact in the generation and the people around you. You'll take a personality test, a gift assessment test. Some of you love data entry. That's your, that's your, that's your lane. Some of you like to have a, a moment like this where you get to communicate. For others, that's not you. You get nauseous just thinking about it. Number one fear, public speaking. <laughs> what we do is we get your gifting and we put it in an area that you can serve on the team. And let me tell you, you will find a fulfillment in your life that you cannot find anywhere else when you're part of something bigger than yourself. Go to Growth Track online or next month, second uh, Sunday after first service. On the screen behind me, you're going to see the many ways that you can give. We are so grateful for your generosity, for your faithfulness. Here at Grace, we give cheerfully and we take God at his word. You're going to see that you can go online, you can text to give. Grace Live, all one word, so the number on the screen. You can raise your hand right where you're at and our ushers will gladly hand you an envelope and you can drop it off on the receptacles on the way out. Thank you so much for being faithful with your tithes and your offering. Hey, I have a few announcements that I don't want you to miss. Put it on your calendar. And if you happen to miss, that's okay. It's all gonna be online. October 30th at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here. At the humble parking lot, we're going to have our trunk or treat. Come on, bring your children, <laughs> bring your grandchildren. If you're a cool uncle, bring your niece and nephew. We have a whole bunch of candies and cars are going to be lined up that are going to be decorated. Come dressed up. We have food trucks. We have giveaways. Come in your costumes. This is going to be a fun, fun time. October 30th, 11 to 2 p.m. Hey, where's my Grace Men at? Come on, Grace Men and Dreza, where you at, fellas? We're so grateful for you. If you're a man here at Grace, you've been hit up by one of these guys who've been to Andreza because it is life changing. You have one more opportunity this year to go to Camp Andreza. This is a men's camp where you can disconnect, raise the volume of God, and, and surround yourself with some brotherhood, men that can walk alongside of you in your journey as becoming the man that God has called you to be. November 4th through the 7th, all that information is online. And here at Grace, we are passionate about stopping human trafficking here in America and around the world. We say grace stops human trafficking. And you may know this, but Houston is one of the largest to have victims who have been abused through human trafficking. We don't take it lightly. We have a phenomenal, strong team that takes it to the next level. They, they're actually in the weeds of things. We are teaming up with A21, a nonprofit organization. We're gonna be marching. We would love for you to be a part in the lobby. You have all that information. You turn your attention to the screens, you have more of that information. You accumulate steps as you move through life. Steps that lead you to opportunities. Human trafficking has enslaved more people today than ever before. Freedom is a human right. But how will you use yours? We walk for the vulnerable to be protected. We walk for survivors to be restored. We walk for sisters, brothers, fathers, and mothers still waiting for freedom. We walk locally to abolish injustice globally. On October 16th, across cities, towns, and streets, we walk again. Because our steps matter, we take ground as we go. Inaction takes a back seat when we show up in the streets. With many eyes, ears, and feet on the ground, we create a momentous sound. 
Over the last six years, we've made millions of steps. Steps towards the world we want to see. Steps towards a world that is free. Showing up is what brings the solution. And the solution is you. Join us for a day of action, October 16th, 2021. Good morning, Grace. Oh, no, that was weak. I I felt like I just made a putt. Good morning, Grace. What a great day in God's house. So good to see everyone here, everyone online. Welcome. Beautiful worship today. It's always good when we gather together and just lift up the name of the Lord and worship. Appreciate Pastor Hector and the team doing so. Jesse, thank you for all the... uh, For the infomercial, there's a lot going on at Grace this fall. I do encourage you, if you've never gone through growth track, just stall a little bit, and instead of going straight to your car, uh, if you'll take a lift, you'll actually do something right. I think it's left. That was a good play on words. So you'll make a left out of here, my left, when you walk out, and um, just take a few minutes, learn about our history. Again, discover your gifting, and plug in. Be a part of the local church. Don't fly stealth. Okay, I can. Wow, I've been gone a few weeks here. Do not fly stealth. Let's do life together. Connect yourself to somebody else. Be a part of what God is doing. And uh, you'll be glad you did. And of course, the, uh, the march on Saturday and everything. Just keep all that in mind. Go to the website. It is all, all there. This Thursday, Melanie had an appointment uh, down by the medical center, and um, I get a text in a little bit, oh dear God, I was just a part of a road rage incident. And it's one of those typical things that can happen to anyone. She literally said, I accidentally cut someone off. They were in my blind spot. I did not mean to. And I tried to wave and say sorry, but this guy went from zero to 110. So angry, he began to lunge with his car, swerve with his car, get in front and brake, get behind and right on my bumper, took an exit chasing me. And she said, then I got mad. And I know you're just thinking, well, that would probably be scary. Melanie Jones mad. She said, then I got mad because he just wouldn't stop. She said, I've got his license plate, which I would like to say to you today, I have a license plate. If you know a guy who knows a guy, because as a husband, now I'm enraged. As if you've never accidentally cut someone off. As as if you've always seen in your blind spots. Then I started contemplating. What in the world is going on with humanity? What is going on with us right now that we have such short fuses? So quick to anger, quick to explode. At what point is an accidental cutoff worth going out of your way, taking an exit that's not your exit? and just being completely enraged. And of course, we know road rage is just one kind of rage that has risen since we've gone through the last 18 months. People are on edge. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't mess with me. It's that inside right now. What's going on on the outside with us is causing what's on the inside of us to reveal itself. 
And I, and I want us to talk about the inside. Let's, let's go from the inside out. I'm talking about matters of the heart. What's really happening on the inside. And I would love to tell you that it only happens to non-Christians. We're not exempt from external battles, but as believers, we're admonished, live a better way. Live a better way. Listen to Psalm 34. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days. Is that, that anyone? I, I, you, yes, please. I want, I love life and I would like to have good days and many of them. Here's how you do it. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous, by the way, that's a cut off. He's going to cut you off. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of them all, from them all. We are a church that believes in the supernatural healing of God. We, we believe that people, we've seen it. We've seen people with cancer healed. We've seen infertility healed. We've seen bones made straight. We have seen the healing power of God in bodies. But we also believe in the healing of the inner wounds. We believe in the healing of the issues that you cannot show but they are just as real. I'm talking about disillusionment. I'm talking about disappointment. I'm talking about bitterness, brokenness, anger. These spirits that we fight on the inside. In his Sermon on the Mount, in fact, best we can tell, Jesus only preached one sermon. He taught. He told a lot of parables but there is one sermon that he preached. Now, I got to tell you, it was long. But he covered a lot of territory. And in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus addresses us from the inside out, not the outside in. He acknowledges that heart issues are hard issues. Say that again. Heart issues are heart issues. In fact, I will tell you, sometimes it's easier to see someone healed from a physical malady than it is to see someone healed from an emotional or a heart malady, an issue of the heart. Part of it is because of human will. I have to be willing to let go. He says in Matthew 5, I'm going to just touch on it now and then we'll come back over the next few weeks, he says, you've heard it said that you shouldn't murder, but I say to you that the real problem is anger, the inner rage that you cannot get under control. He says, you've heard it said you should not commit adultery, but I say to you that the real problem is lust, this broken sexual desire that controls you and puts you in bondage. He says, you've heard it said that you shouldn't be dishonest to others. But I say to you that the real problem is that you aren't honest with yourself. Wow. Jesus knows that disobedience usually stems from dysfunction. And dysfunction most often comes from a point of pain. Somewhere somebody did somebody wrong. And from the point that the wrong was done, a pain was caused and dysfunction has followed. 
Can I tell you it's our prayer in the month of October that we see a move, as Pastor Hector and the team sang about, a healing move happen at Grace and that God heals some of us from the inside out. Yes, we want to see you walking. Yes, we want to see you whole. But like Jesus said, what's easier to say, rise and walk or your sins be forgiven? In other words, let's go to the real issue of the heart. From the inside out, not the outside in. That's how we're supposed to live our lives. And we're dealing with things that have got to be addressed. And I, I told that story about Melanie because there is an issue with anger, rage, that is impacting us. It's all over social media. It's on the streets. Whatever that situation was, whoever that Yahoo was that did that to my girl, there had to be, has to be something else that made a person say, I think I'll start my Monday at 8 a.m. or Thursday at 8 a.m. by wasting an extra quarter tank of gas to harass a lady. But what about us? So let's look at Matthew 5. Jesus is preaching. He says, you're familiar with the command to the ancients. Do not murder. Everybody familiar with that one? So you're not, oh my goodness, I didn't see very many hands. So here's the deal, you've got to know. Don't kill people. God doesn't want you to kill anyone. Y'all got me concerned. Evidently you got somebody on your list. <laughs> well, I don't know. What if I keep the other nine? He says, you're familiar with the command to the ancients. Do not murder. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. Ooh. Carelessly call a brother idiot and you just might find yourself hauled into court. Thoughtlessly yell stupid at a sister and you were on the brink of hellfire. The simple moral fact is that words kill. He only preached one sermon. He didn't waste anything in the sermon. Notice the argument Jesus makes here. It's fascinating. He starts with an external law. He starts with the encounter between God and Moses in which etched in stone there are ten commands by which we are to live our life. And he says to them, you've heard it said, do not murder. And, and we're all like, that's right. Let's talk about murder. Murder is bad. Jesus said, but I want to talk to you about anger. Uh-oh. He moves immediately to the internal issue of the heart. Now the law he's dealing with here, do not murder, contrary to your reaction while ago, it is a pretty big deal. It really does matter that we do not murder. There is one person agreeing with me in this room. First of all, this is Grace Church. Grace. Welcome to Grace. God, if I've ever been in the spirit on a series obviously this is a series you need to hear because you're all looking at me with a twitch in your eye like I, I don't think I like this I don't know who you have on your fridge hit list so I, I'm going to say this again this law is really a big deal don't don't murder it's the sixth of the Ten Commandments. 
There's only one that is put in order of importance. That's the first one. That God is first. The rest are in, they're just listed. So it's not six in importance. I feel like you should know that. <laughs> Literally one of the worst crimes you can commit is murder. About the only way to make murder worse is to make it multiple murder. We need to stress that to this crowd. <laughs> and Jesus tells his audience, when it comes to murder, you know whoever murders is liable of judgment. You know that, that they will go to court. If you murder, you will be arrested. You will go to the judge in a courtroom. There will be prison time and maybe even your death. But Jesus continues in verse 22. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty. He uses the same word, guilty. Wait, Jesus, did you misspeak here? Because over here, he's taking someone's life. I'm not taking a life. I'm just really angry. And he's saying, no, no. You're just as guilty. Let me, let me make sure you don't zone out on this. Because there's two groups of people when you talk about anger. When you talk about something like rage and being mad. There's the people that say, oh man, he's talking to me. And then there's the people saying, oh man, he's not talking to me. Because when we talk about anger, anger there's, there's two opposite groups. Group one is the rage out people. When they're mad, everyone knows they are mad. Do not point at anybody. You show, you act out your anger. It's on your face. It's in your post. It, you bear down on that horn and make your point by staying on that horn. You insult your family members. You punch the wall and have holes in sheetrock. It, it causes destruction and it breaks down in your family and your close friends. In fact, you really don't have close friends because you have rage issues and it will set you off. It's affecting you even physically. Jesus is talking to you. But there's a second group that might be even more dangerous. More than the rage out. That's the rage in. When you're mad and nobody knows. Sometimes not even you. Because you rage in, you're not raging out. You take your anger and you push it down and down and you camouflage your anger towards others with insecurity and self-doubt or self-hatred. You, you stuff it and stuff it so it can fester and transform into bitterness and resentment. You've got a chip on your shoulder, you're not even sure why, but you're raging on the inside some think that being a, a mature Christian means you never get angry and that you never have a, an issue to have your, your, your senses peak. And I'm telling you, that's not true. We know that there is a possibility to ain't be angry and yet not sin. So there's an anger that is not a sinful anger. It's a, it's a biblical category. It's a righteous anger. It's how we can deal with certain things. In fact, anger can be an emotion of love that comes out. But there's the other kind of anger that Jesus said, whichever way you go with it, whether your anger just erupts and spews out like a volcano or grows deep inside of you like a cancer, Either way, the long-term result is the same. It is the breakdown of relationships, the breakdown of community, the breakdown of your emotional and mental health, the inability to love or be loved. And if anger is your inside issue today, we are believing that healing starts today.
It starts with repentance, which means a change, a change of mind. It ends with deliverance. The first step of repentance is you've got to acknowledge what you're doing is wrong. Jesus, with what he is saying, he is confronting culture. He started out in this message blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. And everybody's thinking, this is a good message. And then in the same message, he says, you've heard it said and taught, you shall not murder. And everybody's like, yeah, I've heard that. Well, I'm telling you, your anger makes you just as guilty. Now, now he's moved into new territory. Because we live in a culture that normalizes anger. But Jesus equates anger or rage to murder. Murder is the most immediate and extreme form of a relationship breakdown there can be. It's been in the headlines this week that whenever a spouse is murdered, the first suspect is the other spouse. And usually, it is. Because it's the ultimate way to end a relationship. It's the ultimate way to say, I don't know how to handle this anymore. So I just handled it. I snapped in my anger. But anger and resentment can also lead to little, tiny relationship murders every day. We just don't see it because it builds over time. Anger grows. Wounds happen and we don't know how to articulate it well. A lack of courage to say, this is what happened. This is how I was offended. This is what hurt. Or please forgive me. And we let small things grow into big things because we refuse to forgive and let go. All kinds of relationships get murdered without anyone ever dying. Murders, parent-child relationships, life groups, people at work, relationships that once meant something now mean nothing. People leave churches sometimes because of a small thing that happened years ago or even recently, and it's never resolved on the inside. And so a, a relationship is killed. Anger. Everybody say anger. Some of us would never take another person's life, but we have murdered people's character or reputation. And we know that this is a part of what Jesus is saying because he says it doesn't stop with anger. He just, he just keeps digging. Listen to Matthew 5, the second part. Carelessly call your brother an idiot, and you might find yourself hauled into court. Thoughtlessly yell stupid at a sister, and you were on the brink of hellfire. Now, you would think these are small offenses. Because there are idiots out there. And people do stupid things. The Greek word for insulting your brother that Jesus uses is the word raka. It is the equivalent to a mild insult of idiot. Or it's actually from the, the, word, the Greek word moros, from which we would get the word moron. It literally means empty-headed. 
there's names. I know you got people that are just running through your mind right now like, I now have a Greek word. <laughs> and to call someone a moron, an idiot, to sell, tell someone you are stupid should seem like such a small thing. That's not like murder. I mean, murder, it's... These are small, barely noticed, fleeting faults. Words that fall off our lips without a second thought. I was just saying, because if you saw them drive, they're a moron. Idiot. But Jesus is saying... They actually expose a massive heart issue. And he says the heart issue has huge repercussions. And he starts talking about court. Literally, not just court. If you, in the original, he's talking about supreme court, high court, and hellfire. Where murderers and thieves and rapists. And me, because I cut them off and called them an idiot? The same hell? hell what, what, I don't know why with hellfire, I, I see it like you're just kind of getting to the brink. Like, you know, like I can see it. I'm getting close, saved, but a little singed. Jesus is literally using an upside-down kind of hyperbolic speech. The crimes are getting smaller and smaller, from murder to anger, from insulting your brother to calling a stranger, someone a moron. But the punishment is getting bigger and bigger, going from normal court to supreme court to the final court to God's judgment to hellfire as a possible sentence. Why is Jesus so adamant here that something so small is such a big deal? Why does our anger have to be dealt with? I mean, what's with this healing and uprooting a matter of the, could you just leave me alone? I'm pretty happy with my anger. Some people, it is the fuel they run on. For someone, as if I've never accidentally cut anyone off, Literally, if you've driven, you've had a blind spot. And oh, I'm sorry. You, every one of us. And for someone to go to, from zero to 1,000 over something that everyone has done. So in other words, I will overlook it in me, but I can't overlook it in someone else. There was an issue already there. So I'm just referring to that one, but I mean, because it just happened Thursday, but it could be with, when you go from that zero to a hundred, something has already not been dealt with. And what happened was that just triggered, triggered, you know, like guns have, but kill people. It triggered. So I'm willing to go out of my way, spend gas I really don't need to spend because it's really expensive right now, and take exits that are not my exits, be late for wherever I was going, change the course of my day because someone did a human act that I've also done, but... Ah! Why is this such a big deal? Jesus never forgets that we are image bearers. Everybody say image bearer. See, the biblical view from Genesis 1 is that humans, man and woman, have been built in dignity, worth, 
and value because we are made in God's image. Made just a little lower than God. In His image. That's man. Male and female made in the image of God. Not one made in His image. Male and female, He made them both in His image. And whenever I determine someone made in the image of God is an idiot, is a moron, empty-headed. Whenever I snap and go off on the one I love or the one I have never met, either way, when it comes to image bearers, Jesus has a very clear and very high view on how we are to treat humanity. And when I'm calling that person an idiot, I'm calling God an idiot. And when I'm telling that person, you're a moron, you are empty-headed, I am saying the image you're made in is empty-headed. And the first command lets us know you don't mess with God. They are image bearers just like you. Jesus' little brother James said it this way, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it curse men who have been made in God's likeness. You can't praise God and curse anyone made in His likeness. The person you hold that sinful anger at is an image bearer of the king. Don't talk about the king that way. Maybe we could grasp it this way. If you are a parent and somebody talks about your kid. Oh, did you hear that? (laughs) We did everything but snap. Mm. you don't go there I'll do it I can say how lazy they are phrase my father had was lazy outfit it's a lazy outfit you are a lazy outfit but don't you say Jesus is addressing the danger and the sin of self-righteousness. One of the ways sin has twisted our human hearts is that we spotlight other people's failures and we downplay our own. I say, well, you've got to understand my heart. I, I just misspoke. That's not what I meant. It was an accident. But you do it. What is wrong with you? There's a term for this. Psychologists call it fundamental attribution error. It's a cognitive distortion where we attribute and blame and personalize others' weaknesses, but we downplay our own. And Jesus is saying, Self-righteousness is one of sin's sneakiest, most pervasive ways to break down a human being or a human relationship. And so while you declare and demand, don't murder. When you declare the right to life and then you destroy a person who makes a decision different than you, They too are image bearers. Jesus is reminding us who the real judge is. He reminds us that there are infractions we commit. I'd never murder someone, but man, I'll post. I'll 
I'll retweet. I'll say to something to somebody that I heard that I don't know, but I, I, I destroy image bearers all the time. Murder is the ultimate act of judgment on human existence. You no longer deserve to live. And that's a judgment only God gets to make. So when I start murdering someone's reputation, someone's character, when I start insulting an image bearer, I'm stepping into God's territory of being a judge. I want to see somebody healed. Again, it would be better to not be healed of the physical cancer if we can heal the anger. If we can heal the issue on the inside. Because you don't want to sit in judgment. If you sit in judgment, here's what I know. With the same measure you judge others, you will be judged. And we're judging some people as your value is less than mine. But the judgment seat isn't my seat. It's his. It's his alone. And we live in this culture that normalizes anger. Especially now. Oh, man. And we justify our anger as it being for a righteous cause. But help me now. If at, if at a right... So here, here's the... If I am a doctor trying to get to someone to save their life, and in doing so, I run over another person and take their life, how am I doing? By the same token, in our righteous cause, whatever that cause is, and there are causes out there that I think are right, just. But whenever I start standing for the cause to the point that I'm willing to murder someone else's reputation it's like I'm taking one life while I'm fighting for another right we need to hear this today our world needs to hear this today everyone's an image bearer you must identify the true cause of your anger usually it's that you've suffered an injustice. You've been betrayed. Something happened. Here's the problem with injustice. Doesn't matter what anyone does, you never get the justice back. See, that's the... So you, you take my child, uh, hypothetically. So you take my, my son, Spencer... And I lose him because of your recklessness. So now they take your life. Good. Justice. Wait. I still don't have Spencer. I didn't get him back. Yeah, well now at least you're hurting like I'm hurting. That's, that's what we ha That's humanity trying to work it out. All I know to do is if I'm hurting, then you need to hurt too. It doesn't give me any, my son back. But there. And God's just, when Jesus is teaching here, he's just trying to say God's got a better way. When you see everyone in the image of God and you understand that injustice is never fixed. You, you, doesn't matter what you do. I don't get my boy back. So I never really get my justice Y'all with me? You're thinking. I can tell you're thinking. Sorry. Pastor Brett was here last weekend. So instead, what I need to do is just say, God, would you heal me? Help me. I'm hurting. Comfort me. Strengthen me. Because taking another life doesn't fix this life. Hurting someone the way I was hurt when I was a child doesn't fix this. Destroying this marriage because I grew up in a... That doesn't fix... Help God, 
help me with my anger. Jesus literally says in this chapter, this is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. What matters? Anger. If you enter your place of worship, so think about what we're doing right now. You're here in the room, you're online. You have entered your place of worship. And you're about to make an offering. Tithe, financial gift, offering of worship. Just you're coming to present yourself a living sacrifice. And you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you. Abandon your offering. Notice Jesus' words. Abandon your offering. Leave immediately. Go to this friend. Make things right. Then and only then come back and work things out with God. Note. <laughs> my unforgiveness, my anger hinders my offering. So we come today to say, I'm going to worship. We log in saying, I'm going to, here's my sacrifice, my offering of worship, my tithe, because you have blessed me. And Jesus is saying, when you do this and you know there's an issue, just set it down. Go fix it. After you fixed it, then come back and let's talk about you offering this. Because how can you worship me and my holiness when you're destroying someone made in my image? That's why he brought in court and hellfire. We don't realize how serious of an issue this is. Now I want to ask you to close your eyes. Allow your neighbor's privacy. Just one simple question. If this message was for you, just let me see your hand real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got you. Thank you. Because anger is real. Rage is real. But Jesus is saying there's a better way. There's a reason why he said there's a broad way that many go on and it leads to destruction, then there's a narrow way that leads to life. If what we are doing right now were easy, everybody would do it. But it's easier to walk out, to lash out, to yell out than it is to work it out. But it's the better way. I want to do two things. First, I want to give someone a chance to meet the one in whose image you're made. Online and in the room, I'd like to give you an opportunity. Because I'm going to tell you, without Jesus, what I'm saying right now would be impossible to do. It's hard enough with Jesus, right, church? Yeah, yeah. This is one of the tough things about being a Christ follower. This is Jesus hanging on the cross, looking at the ones who put him there and saying, Father, forgive them. Because he knew before I offer myself as an offering, I got to make this right. So he lived what he taught. Somebody needs salvation. I want to do that, and then we're going to have prayer for healing of the emotions healing from anger. So let me do this first. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I need you. Save me. Save me from myself and save me from my sin. You paid the price. I receive it. Wash me, fill me with your spirit and empower me. From this moment forward, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you just prayed that, I feel the presence of the Lord here. If you just prayed that, lift your hand real quick and let our ushers give you a next step book. This, this is to help you with a next step to move on to freedom. Come on, don't hesitate. Lift, lift it up. I know people were impacted today, today. Grace, let's thank God for what he's doing.
Let, let them see you. They're coming to you. Now, I want us to pray for those who want healing from the anger. It starts now. Everybody say it starts now. Stand with me, please. I've, I know we have another service, and I have taken every bit of my time in trying to share what I feel is a strong issue. I could feel you today. This, this, this is not easy. If you're very sincere about this, I saw your hands. I'm going to ask you to take a minute and do something. I want to invite you just to come to the front. It, it's okay. We've all dealt with anger, so don't worry about it. No one's judging. We've all been the ones who cut off, and we've all been cut off. We've all hurt. We've all been hurt. Yeah, thank you for your honesty. Here's what I love about Grace Church. Honest people. Honest people. I'm believing that even as you're walking this way, you're walking away from the offense, away from the hurt, away from the root cause because something caused it. Something started it. Somebody did something. Somebody did something. I want to say this. I just feel led. Some, it was someone in a position of spiritual authority or leadership. You've been hurt by ministry. Abuse of authority, abuse of your trust. I want to say to you very sincerely, I'm sorry. I'm sorry on behalf, they may be in the grave. I'm sorry. We're human. We're sinners. Sometimes we forget that and we act like we're more than what we are. I'm sorry. Some of you as a spouse parent I just want you to close your eyes and just sense something I want you to sense Jesus walking up to next walking up to you and putting his arm around you feel him right now feel him understand this about him he was a man of sorrows He was acquainted with grief. He was despised. He was rejected. I'm quoting Isaiah. He came to his own, and his own didn't receive him. I'm describing you, but I'm talking about Jesus. He did nothing but love, and he got hate in return. Spit in his face racial slurs beaten his hair pulled everything you have felt Jesus felt and he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and then the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Part of what he did at the cross was pay for your peace. And I want you to feel him right now with his arms around you. Because he's a very present help in time of need. I want you to just lift your hands in a surrender that you're letting go. By God's grace from this moment forward, letting go. And let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, have come today acknowledging the emotional struggle with wounds and offenses that are real. The first thing I do, God, is I validate the offense was wrong. The sin done against her was horrible. What was done to him was excuseless. But we declare today, you're the judge, we're not. We are image bearers. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to begin a healing work in my brother and in my sister. Deal with their heart, deal with the rage. 
I pray that they would loosen their grip on the grudge that they have carried and begin instead to embrace your cross where you paid for our sins and others. God, the person who did this to them, we put into your hands because you're on the judge's seat. Our concern right now is our life and moving forward. Our concern is that we don't replicate what was done to us. Paul said that. He said, that that I hate, I do. He said, I'm a wretched man. God, we declare the cycle ends today. I declare October 10, 2021, the day healing over the rage and the anger begins in these lives. Now, God. Now, God. Now, God. Bless them, touch them, strengthen them. In the name of Jesus, if you receive that, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I receive. Now listen, here's the way I believe this works. It's, it's like the lepers, Jesus told them, go show yourself, and it says, while they were on their way. So now we've got to go on our way. You know. If there's someone you need to forgive, you don't have to meet with them. Again, they may be six feet under. It's right here. You are releasing them. And it's not because they're worth it. This is what you tell them. I'm not forgiving you because you're worth forgiving. I'm forgiving you because I am. And I'm releasing myself. Because I'm getting on with my life and I'm no longer going to be managed by anger. I want the peace of God to reign and rule in my life. We're going to continue inside out over the next few weeks. And I pray that every one of you who responded, God begins a work now that you'll look back and say, He touched me, it changed, it shifted in that moment. Now let me pray for all of you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his matchless peace. In Jesus' name, amen.